plan for the 22 push-ups a day challenge to raise awareness for veteran suicide. 22 guys lose hope. You know, I talked about it yesterday, about how difficult it is to do 22. And you know, it takes time. You know, but I take a, you think about it, you know, time does cost. You know, you spend it, and hopefully you spend it wisely. I know last year I wasted a lot of time being sorrowful, I'm missing out, not finishing my year with the kids. And uh, graduation ended up today, and a lot of parents and stuff were all saying how sad they were that they, they're gonna miss Woodcrest and all that. And you get the sort of feeling how I felt you know times that by like a hundred because you know I was looking forward to seeing my kindergarten kids my first year graduate and move on to Westwood and uh, I was really looking forward to that and it ended really short and then I felt hurt and not only that you know I had a uh, Lenaris told me she was gonna act like my big sister and stuff and when I was hurting you know I reached out to her by text I told her you know how bad it was and you know I didn't get no answer and sort of like you know people not doing the 22 here a day you know because you know you don't know whether it's right or wrong or you know you don't want to do it just because of some other reason and uh, you know it really is hard to get down that hole, and I've said that before. It takes somebody special to do it. It takes somebody with some balls to actually, you know what, say I'm gonna sacrifice myself a little bit and see what ugliness I find and help this guy up. Even if you did put me in that hole, you know, if I was such a threat from what you guys said in that meeting, you would think you'd wanna help, but it didn't come. It didn't happen. But then, you know, I take a look at all these kids that, you know, four kids here in high school that did the same thing. They lost hope. They had parents. Somehow they didn't see it. They didn't hear the messages, because I know there was messages. There always are. And, um, you know, we don't prevent anything by acting, you know, before the, the end happens. We always cry about it later afterwards and we don't fix it and we don't change and you know address the issues and you know we try the bullying and all that you know you're gonna you're gonna find that that happens everywhere you go in fact you could say that what Lenaris and H.R. Ryan did to me was sort of bullying took an event that didn't even pertain to me and put it on me sort of like all the other officers dealing in the cities right now about one event that four others officers participated in that doesn't mean that every single one of them is bad you know just because they have that title of police I have the title of marine is every bad kid a really bad kid no I've worked with plenty of kids I don't think any of them were bad I think they all just don't know how to get through the issue the problem and that was my job to fix it and help them guide guide them through it as best I could and I think I did that Sure, there were difficult kids and this, that, the other, but I'll remind you, at Woodcrest, we only had four parents to help the whole school, 400 and some kids, and it was difficult. By no means, I was running around, and a lot of you parents, a lot of you other teachers know that. And um, I tried my best to cover everything. I really did. So, yeah, the 22 day, it doesn't mean much, but it really does, because you put in time and effort into raising something, trying to be proactive rather than reactive. Because we're too reactive to stuff. Even with this Floyd stuff and the way he was treated, you know. It happens over and over again and we don't learn nothing. We don't change anything. We just keep crying every time and reacting afterwards. And then it's just like the little kids, you know. When they get upset, they start throwing stuff and trashing rooms and breaking stuff. And geez, that sounds a lot like the rice, doesn't it? It does. You know, you take a look at myself last year when I was home alone. I didn't wreck nothing. Actually, I did. I wrecked myself. 
I wrecked myself by staying inside and isolating, not talking to really anybody until they called, not telling people that I was really hurting badly. Um, I tried to, sent lots of messages, like I said before. And then drinking, that didn't help, that's worse. And my roommates smoked weed and, you know, not ah, here, make you feel better. <laughs> Guess what? Found out in therapy, that stuff's worse. Every single person in therapy was smoking weed, you know? And, you know, I don't even like that stuff. I just did it to try to feel better. Um, so it didn't work. The, the real work is, uh, you know, helping somebody through it, guiding them. You know, look, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. You know, my buddy, who, he's, you know, he's, his parents got a church. You know, I used to go to the church with them sometimes. But church, you know, sometimes I, I don't get a good feeling at church, you know, sometimes. And then I do talk to God a lot and soon and uh question him on everything but you know that's the whole thing about faith you got to have faith in him and, and all that and uh sometimes it's hard to do that when you see nothing in front of you you don't see that light at the end of the tunnel you know that's uh yeah, that's hard and sometimes you just need that person to guide you through it listen there's it's, there's light there but you got to go but being all negative is something about about somebody you know it does hurt after a while. It just adds on, adds on, adds on. You know? I don't know. I, I think uh, being more proactive about uh, treating people with more respect and stuff and, and telling them the truth. You know? I don't have a problem telling the truth. Like I said in the meeting, in the last meeting, you know, I said, listen, everything that you guys wrote me up on, I'd do it again because I didn't think it was wrong. Other than the tackling of the kid, that was stupid. Don't get me wrong. But I thought it was funny when I was gonna just before I did it that would be hilarious you know unfortunately I was wrong mistakes do happen and I apologize he punished me for it I had him punished before it go look at the suicide letter it says it. it says exactly what I did and you know I, I lead by example and if I do something wrong I expect to be punished just like I do the kids I, you know push-ups sit-ups whatever and he gave me he was gonna have me do push-ups and I was like, ah, oh, that's easy, that'll be easy. But then he switched it on me and had me do a run with my fat ass. And boy, that hurt. <laughs> it did. <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> but, you know, you know, you take a look. All I wanted was for an apology. I keep telling the cops, cops say, hey, I can't force them to make an apology. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. Because, you know what, nobody wants to go face to face and say, I'm sorry. Nobody's willing to do that. Instead, you know, you want to just trash rooms and, and you know, ruin buildings, ruin cities, or ruin yourself, such as I did. And it's sad. It's sad because, you know, sometimes all you need is a hand or maybe 22 push-ups to raise awareness. So that's what I'm going to say today. And I'm going to get to 22 because I'm at a park and there's a whole bunch of people here playing Frisbee, Frisbee soccer. So, uh, I ain't gonna play. I can't run. I'm running with a pack. I'm tired already. So, I'll get to the 22, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. And today, you know, I'm gonna nominate um, Reyes. Little Reyes, a little Mexican. He's out in California now, and his wife's meeting him on a long journey back home. Uh, Reyes, you know, I know you're busy. Don't worry about it if you can't do it, but, um, I, just, I hope you find some time. All right, guys. Semper Fi. 2 to 22. Okay. Alright, Rance. We'll get your 22, buddy.